I wouldn't vote to repeal the law. The law did some good things. I'm a, a parent. My daughter's 22 years old. So one of the things it does, it allows you to cover your child up to 27. There are a lot of things in there. Rural hospitals, again, living in Warren County, we benefit from that. Uh, it, in it increases the funding for rural hospitals. There are some good things in the Act. The problem with the Act was, and it's what happens in Washington, D.C., you have a valid goal. You have a valid goal of taking care of people. Look, I, my faith has always taught me to be my brother's and sister's keeper. We have an obligation to take care of each other. Americans have always done that throughout our history. My wife had a cancer scare a couple of years back, and I, I, I'm very grateful. I thank God that we had good insurance. She had an operation, and she, she was able to be taken care of. I can't imagine what somebody goes through who has a child or a spouse or a father uh, mother, any, anybody in their family who they care about who goes through this kind of turmoil and doesn't have health insurance. It's a horrible thing to go through. So the goal is valid. I think everybody shares the goal of taking care of each other. That's an American value we stand by. The question is how do they go about it in D.C.? And in D.C. what happens is most of the time you have people playing partisanship, you know, involved in partisanship, you have people on one side saying something and people on the other side saying another. With the health care bill you ended up with sort of a patchwork of different ideas. It wasn't a coherent system. It wasn't one main plan. It was sort of a Frankenstein's monster of different parts and pieces here and there. That's not how you do something. That's not how you do something in the private sector. That's not how you put a plan together. Uh, I'm actually not a big fan of the mandates. I wasn't a big fan of the mandates when uh, Mitt Romney enacted them as a Republican governor in Massachusetts. That's one thing I really don't favor. I have other things I would like to do that would ensure universal access to quality health care and keeping the costs down. Now, one of the most important things that was done in Washington recently and I supported, and my opponent unfortunately didn't support, was eliminating the antitrust exemption for health insurance, for the health insurance industry. That was a unique thing because only the other, only other industry in America that had an antitrust exemption was Major League Baseball. So you got Major League Baseball and then you've got the health insurance industry. What happened was it was an act passed back in the 40s that allowed each state to regulate their own health insurance under, under antitrust principles. By its nature, antitrust should be federal, one size for the entire industry nationwide. That was eliminated. That's a positive step. We can have freer and fairer competition between health insurance companies. That's critical. But keeping the price down, keep having availability for quality health care, also for our veterans, there are over 2,500 veterans every year that die because they don't have adequate access to health care. I serve as a first lieutenant in the New York Guard and I'm proud to do so. And um, I'll tell you, when I see veterans not getting what they deserve, these are people that fought and died and fought and bled for our country. Many veterans, you know, these veterans gave up their lives literally to serve our country. Even when they come back, they don't come back whole sometimes. They, they've given so much to our nation to think that we don't take care of them like we should. That's something I want to do. With the, I want to have a special health care system for our veterans. They deserve the very best care possible. The kids coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan, they deserve the best health care possible. Not just physically. When you come back from war, you know, you go through an awful lot there. It's a, it's a very tough process. They need help. They need care. They need our support. So one of the things I want to do in the health care area specifically is I want to have a separate set of rules for veterans where they are, they are taken care of and they get the very best care possible. But we have to join together. We have to put partisanship aside. In D.C., that's the problem. You might have five or six good ideas. Everybody comes together. Everybody wants a piece of the pie. Everybody wants to have their name on something. That's not what it's about. That's not what, not what I'm about. I'm not about partisanship. I've, I was a Republican for 22 years of my life. I'm a Democrat now. What I understand, and one thing the military teaches you, you line up to do something. You don't worry if the guy next to you is a Republican or Democrat. You don't worry what his religion or race is. We work together as Americans. And health care is a critical issue for all of us. We have to protect Medicare. We have to take care of our seniors. These are issues that are very important to me. These are the kind of issues that are moral, that are about being your brothers and sisters keeper. These are the things that motivate me to get in the race. So I will go to Washington. We have to have universal access. We have to improve what we have now. It's a start. The current bill is a start. It's far from perfect. And I want to go in there and I want to take a common sense approach to things like I've taken everything else in my life. And coming from the private sector, I'd like to add a little private sector um, common sense to what they do down in D.C.